It's funny. You know, I've been, I always joke around saying the two sports that I know the most about are sports that I did, which is football and uh, combat sports, MMA and Thai boxing. Yet, those sports, <laughs> I'm always wrong about. Um, it's weird, which is why I'm not a betting man. I'm not a black and white thinker, and I hate being somebody that just says, I don't like the word never, you know, especially when it comes to something that is constantly evolving. Um, and especially when you're limited on information, you know, when all you really have is what the bottom feeder is getting, you know, basically at the tail end of the media, you know, you're limited in terms of your hypothesis and what you can come to as conclusions. Um, so I hate just being a never, never living in never, never land. You know what I mean? Um, I knew this would be that year that would be very telling, you know, cause on paper, this team should be able to win. Um, I'm one of those people that I sure as hell don't follow blindly. I definitely don't follow blindly. It's actually contrary to my nature. Um, but as I've gotten older, I've also understood how being just blindly negative and a pessimistic nihilist, let's put it that way. That's a better way to put it. Like, it's too easy to just be a hater. It's too easy to just... Um, it's too easy to just, you know, say everything's bad and everything's fucked up and nothing's ever going to get better. You know, that's just, that's, that's, that's basically the exact same thing only on the other side of the coin of being a blind optimist, you know. You don't follow blindly, good or bad. You don't follow the mob when the mob is saying that everything is evil and everything is messed up. Um, I'm the complete antithesis of a group thinker. Um... And, you know, <laughs> I'm definitely, when it comes to uh, this Frost stuff, there's so many things that I was liking about it. So many things that I was loving about what I was seeing out of this team, you know. And, uh, which I've gone into immense detail about. You know, I love the fact that all these old school players are able to be treated as family and be able to be a part of practice, be able to be a part of the development of these new players. You know, I love the fact that Tom Osborne gets to hang out of practice whenever the hell he's around. You know, I love the physical development of these players, how big they are, you know, the physicality of them. Um, so you assume, especially with a coach that has a pedigree like Frost, there's no reason to think that they don't get better. So it's a weird anomaly to just see them not progress, to see them not get better, to keep making all the same mistakes, to keep shooting themselves in the foot over and over and over. You know, but it's obviously at, the, at this point that just the sloppy play, the level of sloppy play, it, it just can't be fixed. Or it just doesn't seem like it's going to get fixed. And again, I've, uh, I, I hate, I really, really hate just constant regime changes. You know, it's hard to build a foundation when you're trying to walk on water. You know what I mean? And I just feel like when you're constantly trying to change coaches over and over and over and over, um... You know, it's, it's just hard to ever get any momentum of any kind, any consistency. Consistency usually is what wins, is usually what life satisfies, or not satisfies, is usually what life rewards. Um, but that doesn't seem to be the case, you know. Even during the Riley tenure, you know, as bad as that team was looking, um, I just did, I was like, dude, three years, you got to give a coach more than three years. I've always been the proponent of five years. You got to give a coach five years. You know, but I did always know that this team, this team was going to be the make or break team. You know, like I felt, I feel like as far as progression, um, as far as consistency, as far as all the leaders, as far as what they had in the O line and the D line and what they had at receivers and all that stuff. You know, I was like, yeah, if, if they, if he can't get any momentum of any quality whatsoever out of this team, then yeah, I'm definitely on the, on the side of, you know, not temerously reckless about my conclusions like so many other grumpy people are. Um, but, you know, unfortunately, unfortunately, from what I saw, it's just, yeah, it's this stuff is not going to change. And what's funny about it is that I was talking with my dad about, about it and how, you know, it's hard to 
look at the progression of an Adrian Martinez and look at him and say, how could you be so good and look so promising in 2018? Um, and then just not get over his ills, his issues, the things that he obviously has issues with. Um, he hangs onto the ball way too long. You can tell going through his progressions, he's very slow. Um, you know, and you can make the argument that when he was a freshman, he didn't, he wasn't asked to go through all those progressions. He just was making a t two reads and boom, go, you know. Um, now, you, the easy answer, the easy answer is to say, um, the easy answer is to say that the coaches screwed him up. I, you know, how could, I'm not a coach. It'd be easy, I mean, yeah, that'd be easy to say, absolutely. So I could sit here and say, yeah, the coaches screwed him up. But also, that's an easy conclusion. You know, in my head, it's like I want to see them screw up one more quarterback, you know. Their loyalty, their loyalty to Adrian, you have to admire and respect because loyalty is so few and far between anymore. I mean, I did say that I wasn't, I was going to review games three or four times like I normally do, which I probably will do. I'm still going to watch this game three or four times probably, but I wasn't going to do an impulsive response to these games because I feel like when you're too wrapped up in emotion, um, your your ability to see what is actually happening is is clouded, um, but this game was was pretty pretty cut and dry. It's pretty cut and dry. The same mistakes are being made. Um, even Cam Jurgens, like I would have bet the house that he would stop with those snap issues, and he still had one bad snap that was over over Adrian's head. You know, and I'm sure there's a lot of reasons for that. Maybe Adrian is is not doing the snap counts correctly. Who knows? Whatever. Um, it's, it's going to be a long season, guys. Um, I'm still a fan. I'll always be a fan. And I still stand behind. I absolutely stand behind the reasons that I felt optimistic about this team. You know, again, it's just too easy. It's too easy to just be like, nope, they're always going to suck. They're always going to suck. Nobody's ever going to get any better. That's just, oh, come on, dude. That's the equivalent of following blindly. Um, you know, but, yeah. It's a fair assumption to assume that this, uh, that they're not going to, they're not going to be able to fix these mistakes that they keep making over and over and over. And as hard as this schedule is, boy, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. I suppose I'll continue to break games down and look at games, you know, that are worth breaking down. But, you know. If these games stay as ugly as they are and they keep making the same mistakes and Adrian still looks as bad as he looks, um, basically just giving away points, giving away balls, it's like, man, and Adrian's one of those cats, you just want to root for the guy. Seems like an all right dude, you know. But damn, what an, 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 an anomaly, what an anomaly. A player that looks so amazing in 2018, you know. He had, he had a good receiver in Stanley Morgan. J.D. Spielman was pretty solid, but it's like, you know, the receivers that they have now, dude, they got three or four play receivers that are fabulous and good tight ends. It's like, nah, Adrian's got help, man. He's got help, you know. How he's regressed so much is, is perplexing, is extremely perplexing, you know. I'm not going to hate on the guy. He seems like a good dude, you know what I mean? But him... The mistakes that he makes just is 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 a killer. Is team killer, you know, or or momentum killer. And I'm not even gonna go into what seems like, you know, a lot of calls that are almost on purpose to slow momentum. You know, there's there was an incredibly terrible call that took an inter interception away. It, and a, and a, at a time where it looked like the game was heading towards Nebraska, and then they call a bad call. They call a bad call that took away the interception. And then, and then when they were starting to actually have momentum behind a drive, um, you got a couple first downs. And then they did a review a slow, to slow the game down, did a review to see if Oliver Martin caught the ball, which was blatantly obvious that he caught it. You know, it's like, I don't know. You know, it just seems like momentum killers. That game was slow, so slow. You know, it was kind of hard to watch. Not just because Nebraska was playing terrible and they're, they look just completely making all the same mistakes, just beating themselves again. Um, but then, dude, the Big Ten, dude, the Big Ten sucks. Like, man, the refereeing and all that stuff is just, it's hard to watch, man. 
Ugly football. Ugly football. Ugh. When's basketball season start? 